go by the name Hellraiser from Wu Tang Group Sons of Man. It was actually fun then before it got more business. See, what you got to understand it became the music business. We used to freestyle, like, some of the best rappers we used to do that shit. We used to be at video shoots, and outside the video shoot, we'd be sitting there, and that's where I came from. Like, like shows we used to do in parks, park jams. They was called jams or block parties. That was, that was our shows for y'all today, which is uh, Madison Square Garden type shit. But, you know, for us, it was a regular thing in the park with the DJ, speakers, and people dancing, they would do the new dance battles. It was break dancing back then, but now today it's a whole new thing. When I first first got into the to it, I was um introduced into DJ Twins. Um, they DJ for for Red Man now. They've been DJ for him for years, but um, they 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 had invited me to the um I think it was time for some action video. Shoot. And um, that was like one of my first big experiences with the shit. And I got to see how, how, how it was besides just watching it on TV and video music box. So how that shit looks behind the scene. I got to see, oh, like it's like that. Okay. So, so that's like one of my early memories. Then my next step was in the Wu-Tang. Shabazz the Disciple, um, we was in a group called the Mad Mob. From Rail Projects and um, Supreme was our producer, still is w for for me and shit. And um, and Shabazz was invited to the studio to get on a Diary of a Madman for the Grave Diggers album, and he brought the Mad Mar with him to to meet RZA. And then when we got there, they was doing they was recording a few albums actually. They was doing Into the Thirty Six Chambers, walked into the Firehouse Studios. You walk in there, it's like sitting there, met the mans and ghost face. Like, that shit was crazy. I'm like, holy shit, man. And then they was cool. Like, they're like, yo, shorty. They're like, they're like you kick some shit. Like, like they were like, let me hear you rhyme. And then when I rhymed, they was like, wow, you dope, man. You're going you to be the future. And um, that shit, I honored. it. And I, and I took that in, and that's what I did with it. My brother, that's that's a little older than me, he was the rapper in my family first. And my cousin is a DJ. He was DJ Vandy C. And uh, he used to um, be on a radio show, 91.5 in New York City, him and Bill Blast. And um, he was a DJ. And he would take my brother around shit, like run DMC shows and shit like that. And then I was young, I was little, and... My brother always, always used to rhyme to me, like, yo, come here, come here, come here. Tell me what this sound like. And, and he used to rhyme to me. And that's how I got it. Because in Red Hook, he was, he was the super heavy rap nigga. So everybody be like, oh, you, 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 his little brother. When you going to start? And then I'm like, they, they kept pushing on me. So I'm like, wow, you know. And then I started doing talent shows. And then for talent shows, me and my partner, we, we, we just kept, kept going with the talent show shit. And then our names started growing up. And then it was like, yo, you next, man. You the, you the future of this shit. I only listen to old old music. I can't really deal with the new music because it's too too far out there. Cause I, I could tell they ain't doing what I'm doing, and they ain't listening to the old music. Like I honor Rock Cam and Karis One. Those are very important brothers, and so is Ice Cube. There's no way you doing all this gangster shit, and you 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 not an Ice Cube fan. That shit is insane to me. Doing it alone and learning, learning, learning the business parts of it. Because the music thing, like I said, is only 10% of it. 90% of it is business. So if you don't know none of that, you, you're just playing games with it. I was original in my music and very lyrical and a poet and live what I talk about. And, um, I want children to be able to pick it up and do it. And carry on the legacy. My son is doing it already. And I never told him to. to, to, to now you sit, make your child sit down. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Now when I first came home from the hospital. My son came downstairs. He came running down the stairs with my laptop. And he's like dad you home? 
And I looked. I said, the first thing I said is, what is my laptop doing upstairs? I said, what you doing my laptop? He said, no, 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 Dad. I got to play you something. He said, he said no, I couldn't wait for you to get home from the hospital because um, I want you to hear this. And then he started playing this music. My eyes fell out. I was in tears. Because he, he was, I said, wait a minute. I said, I said, who recorded you? He said, no, Dad. Um, I recorded myself. I, I used your equipment. He said, I will watch you when you was always downstairs recording. I said, well, I said, wow, if I was doing something negative around here, he'd have picked that up. And then he was quiet about it. And um, I said, I said, I said, wait a minute. I said, you recorded yourself too? He said, yes. He said, he said yes, because I was always watching you. So I knew what to do. And then um, I said, I said, yeah. I said, get some more songs done. And then I had bought him a microphone. And then, then he was like, oh, Lord. he's excited. That's what the feeling that I had when I first got to it. So he was really excited over it. Like, wow, wow, wow. Then the next thing you know, he constantly kept making songs. I'm like, wow. I said, you know what? He picked it up without me pushing him into it. 